Every year, Americans eat about a billion and a half pounds of potato chips. But how many potatoes is that? It turns out that this eight ounce bag of potato chips contains five medium sized potatoes. That's a lot of potatoes. Every potato chip begins its journey here on this loading dock with the machine they call the Spudnik. As a worker drives Spudnik straight into the truck, its angled head loads the potatoes onto a conveyor that feeds them into crates. This way, the Spudnik dumps the entire load of potatoes in about 30 minutes. A job that used to take two workers more than half the day. But before the truck can even be unloaded, a sample bucket of potatoes is tested. If they don't have the right color or contain too many defects, the load is rejected. Lutz also determines how much sugar or water the potatoes contain. Sugar testing is important to us because it helps us figure out how long we can store certain potatoes throughout the winter months. And since shipping potatoes are only harvested seven months a year, the ones with lower sugar content are the ones that get stored for use between growing seasons. They pass the test and can now move from potatoes to potato chips. Conveyors move the potatoes to workers who feed them into crates. The next stop is the storage cellar. Some potatoes will wait here for seven months before they're turned into chips. And since potatoes don't grow during the cold winter months, long-term storage is necessary to keep the factory supplied with potatoes all year long. We store our potatoes back here in our wooden crates. The cellar that we're in right now approximately holds 55,100 boxes. Each box weighs 960 pounds, which comes out to 5 million pounds just in this cellar alone. And believe it or not, they've got 14 other cellars just like it. But seven months is a long time to store a vegetable. How do they make sure their potatoes are always fresh, keep them moist and cool? Our humidity in our cellars is 90%. Our temperature is 46 to 50 degrees, and that helps us with our potato color and our firmness of our potatoes. When it's time to move the potatoes out of storage, Workers transport the crates from the storage area into a hopper, which holds about 2,500 pounds of potatoes. They may seem tough, but potatoes bruise pretty easily. This hopper makes sure they aren't dropped from higher than 24 inches. The potatoes drop into another conveyor system. Only this one doesn't rely on a belt to carry its load. It's called the flume. It works like the log ride at an amusement park. Water cushions the potatoes as they float with the current down a metal trough. At the end of the trough, a propeller shoots the water in the potatoes over 100 feet into the air, straight up to the next floor. Upstairs, the potatoes pop out the top of the flume and roll into this hopper. If you're wondering why the water is so dirty, remember, potatoes grow in the ground. Now it's time to turn these potatoes into potato chips. Introducing the peeler. But this machine is nothing like the everyday kitchen tool we all know. It doesn't use a single blade to de-skin these spuds. The interior of this massive steel drum is lined with a gritty substance that acts like sandpaper. 
As the potatoes spin around inside and rub against it, the abrasive lining removes most of the skin of each and every potato without damaging its delicate white flesh. Now that the potatoes have been stripped down, inspectors check for defects, trim them, and toss out any bruised or damaged pieces. But the discarded pieces won't go to waste. They're shipped to ranchers to use as cattle feed. As for the chipworthy potatoes, they move on to the next stage of their journey. The slicer. This machine turns one eight ounce potato into about 50 slices in two seconds flat. Here's how it works. As a hopper feeds the potatoes into the spinning compartment, the spinning action forces the potatoes into the blades along the container wall, creating uniform slices about the same thickness as a penny. Then, the potato slices enter this rotating steel drum, part of an 18-foot-long washing machine called the rinse hopper. Next, conveyor belts move the slices through four water rinses. But the goal isn't just to clean the slices, it's to remove this. That foamy white stuff you see there is starch, and potatoes are packed with it. This complex carbohydrate would make the finished product too hard and brittle. So Utz extracts as much of it as possible. After a quick blow dry, they make their final transformation from potato to chip in the fryer. A conveyor feeds the slices directly into this searing hot cottonseed oil, which hovers just around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. But potato slices are naturally buoyant, so this hold-down belt keeps them submerged to ensure a thorough fry job. And how much oil does it take to make all those chips? Each week, Utz goes through about 55,000 gallons of it. Now, you might think a fried chip is a heavier chip. But in fact, frying is what makes them lose their mass. A potato is actually 80% water, most of which evaporates as it fries. That's why it takes four pounds of potatoes to make one pound of chips. But they're not done yet. They have their signature crunch, but what about that signature taste? First, the most basic seasoning of all, salt. This trough sprinkles a thin layer of it over the still moist chips. But before they can add the really tasty stuff, these chips must make it past one final inspector. The OptiSort. The OptiSort finds defective chips and removes them from the line. It sounds simple, but wait till you see how it works. As the chips fly past the threshold of the OptiSort, a miniature camera captures images of each chip. When the camera spots a defect, a message goes out to 172 separate air guns. Once a gun zeroes in on the problem chip, a single blast blows it away. And all this happens in just one-fifth of a second. Now that these potatoes are crispy chips, they're ready for a dose of seasonings. Conveyor belts carry the chips 11 feet up into the flavor zone. 
This is where Ux adds the flavors we know and love. Barbecue. Salt and vinegar. Sour cream and onion. As these powdered seasonings sprinkle over the chips, the conveyor belts vibrate to make sure they're evenly coated. These finished chips are ready for packaging. But have you ever wondered how they bag them without breaking them? It's called the form fill and seal machine. It uses gentle vibration to divide the chips into 14 separate steel bins. The bins then measure out the right amount of chips and drop them into waiting bags. But just before the machine seals each bag shut, it gives the bag a quick blast of nitrogen. Not only does the nitrogen pad the bag and protect the chips from breaking during shipping, it also helps keep the chips fresh and crunchy. Just this one factory produces 312,000 pounds of potato chips every single day. Now that's a lot to swallow.